I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and happy Hanukkah! We have a really, hopefully, exciting video planned for today. Right here, I have 200 grams of yarn, um, 100 gram skein, and then 10 10 gram mini skeins of DK weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon yarn. And I plan to turn all of these into some cakes. Aw, we've got a baby and a mommy. We have a little itty bitty 10 gram cake, and then our larger 100 gram cake. Now, I want to dye these at the same time in the same dye pot, but not just the two of these. I thought it would be fun to see some cakes in a bunch of different sizes, and so, what I would like to do, and honestly, I'm not sure how well that this will work, but I'd like to, using two of these, make a 20 gram mini cake, make and make a 50 gram mini cake. And then, well, the last two might just be two other 10 gram ones. But then we could dye all of that at the same time and sort of see if we can see any cool differences. Now, that's assuming I can combine some of these and they won't pop apart. I wound 10 grams onto my little ball winder and I'm gonna get set up and I'm just gonna insert the end of the next one in here and sort of lower it, there we go, to kind of continue that on the outside of the first. Cut out this middle portion. Here we are coming up to the end, and there we go. So there we go. Now we have a 20 gram little cake compared to our 10 gram one, but this is actually made out of two mini skeins, um, which normally I might not try to do the cake out of mini skeins. I might, I might have taken one skein and wound it into 50 grams and maybe 30 grams and 20 grams or something. But since I am going to wind all of this into mini skeins in the end anyway, it sort of made sense to start with the minis since those were pretty measured. And yeah, we'll see if we can get something really, really cool this way. Here we have 200 grams of yarn cakes where 100 grams all connected, 50, 20, and 3 tons that are all made up of our 10 gram mini skeins. It's worth noting that our 50 gram cake is probably the tightest wound one. Um, then next maybe the 100 gram and these ones are all fairly loose. When doing the 50 gram cake I found it easy to sort of tuck the previous ends under the strings as we went, but I'm actually really excited to see what these all look like unraveled. In my 12 quart pot I have 24 cups of water and we are going to add one cup, so about 236 milliliters of a 1% stock solution of Dharma Saffron Spice that I mixed up yesterday. Um, and you know, that isn't looking like insanely pigmented to me, so I'm going to go ahead and add one more half cup. So a cup and a half and a little under uh, 360 milliliters total. Even though I did shake up the bottle, it does look like now when I turn it upside down, some sediment settled. So like you can kind of see there's some sediment on the bottom. So we might end up deciding to add more pigment. That is all fine we are going to add our yarn. There is no acid in here yet, but that's honestly the way that I like to start a lot of my cake dyeing. Um, that allows some time, especially for dry cakes, to sort of get saturated and start to absorb some color. And we can see some yarn is popping off the outside of some of those rings. That totally can happen. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to want to add a lot more color. Uh, but you know what? Let's go ahead and give this about five minutes and then see where we are. I'm going to try not to move things around because I don't want to create any tangles. 
<laughs> and yeah, you can see like our cakes are going to flip around as these bubbles come out. It might be a little interesting to untangle some of that, but <laughs> we will see. This is more of what I wanted to see on the outside. I wanted to feel the like burnt orange color. I'm now going to add just a quarter cup, so that's just four tablespoons of white vinegar. We're going to wait an additional 10 minutes um, and then we'll add more vinegar. But the slow vinegar addition is again to allow time for these colors to penetrate towards the center. The color has absorbed pretty well. I'm going to reduce the heat, but I think that you could see that we're seeing like this yellowish, but we're seeing through to the bottom without much issue. Whoops. But I am going to go ahead and add another, what was it, quarter cup of vinegar. I think I'll add another two. This is equivalent to adding eight more tablespoons of white vinegar to our pot. And yeah, I'm really, really excited to see more about what all of these look like. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this for 15 minutes. There's still a little bit of color in here and we have some choices, including tossing in a wonderful yarn mop. Uh, this skein I just threw in is some fingering weight yarn in the same fiber content and you can see it's picking up sort of that pale yellow color in there. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off the heat. Um, but the water is still obviously hot and I'm going to let everything sit here for about 20 minutes. I might at some point come and untwist that twisted skein I just added, but yeah, I'm curious how much pigment that might soak up uh, while we let things cool off a little bit. Let's take a peek and the water is cooling off a lot. You can see some patchiness in the color, maybe not, but there's a little bit of patchiness on the color on the outside. Maybe because some of the color from some of the cakes was coming on to our little mop friend. But let's go ahead and remove the big cake um, and these smaller ones. And I'm taking care because I know that there was some movement around some of the ends and oof, I am not looking forward to dealing with that with this uh, bit of a mess but even though we're steamy you can see ooh we've got some like pops of you know the color strikes mostly on the outside and we have lighter pops in the middle but I'm really curious to get to compare these to each other. I'm going to set all this aside to cool. And I'm also going to remove our mop, but I'll leave it twisted in case we want it again. Next up, I have two cakes that are 100 grams, just the fingering weight platinum yarn. I have 10 mini cakes that are 10 grams each and one cake that is a tad bit tighter than the other two that is made up of 10 10 gram mini skeins. And we're gonna go put all of this into one pot. This time we also started with 24 cups of water in our pot, no acid, and I added a cup and a half of our well-shaken 1% stock solution of Dharma Saffron Spice. This time we're dyeing 400 grams of yarn Total. And I put it all in the pot while well, the pot was still probably warm but not as hot as it could be. One thing to absolutely note is that there's a lot more surface area here because of those mini balls, which might mean we end up with less color penetration on our larger, slightly tighter cakes than we might otherwise see if I just put 400 gram total cakes in this pot. But I cannot wait to see how things end up. I waited about five minutes, added acid, added more acid, add another 10 minute mark, etc. like I did the first time. At the end of adding the acid, I popped our yarn mop back in, back in there, maybe a little earlier than last time, but let's just see. 
Then I turned off the heat completely, let everything cool off for 20 minutes before I removed the yarn and placed it in another pot. As we started removing the cakes, there's no question that there's some tangling going on as well, but I'm gonna set it all aside, let it cool, put it through the spin dryer, and once it's had a few days to dry, we'll come back and take a closer look. As for this mess, it includes the ends, I think, of every single one of these cakes. I'm going to try to follow my own advice and let this dry out a bit before I attempt to unravel it further. But I am going to attempt to go put all this through the spin dryer because that'll help everything dry a bit as well. Things definitely did not end up any more tangled out of the spin dryer. I placed them sort of in this basket that I'm going to set on top of my drying rack to dry out for a few days, but the spin dryer removed a lot of the liquid. Now that things have dried a little bit, I can try to deal with this lovely tangled mess. I don't think it should be too, too bad, but it might take a tiny bit of finessing. But we have our 100 gram cake. This is our 50 gram cake. This is our 20 gram. And then we've got three tens in the DK weight yarn. We also have our Leave No Die Behind skein, which we tossed in twice, and it is cute and more pastel. But I'm gonna go try to deal with this off camera. The tangles looked worse than they did, and it only took me about five minutes to unravel. Here we have the three cakes unraveled that were just 10 grams each, and we have a very subtle gradient from that deeper orange to that paler, um, orange color and there's reverse speckles throughout. On our 20 gram cake, this is really cool. There's absolutely a difference between the two and you can see the gradient progress over the two. So even just adding an additional 20 grams on top, there is a big difference between the two. The cake with five 10 gram minis wound together was a bit tighter, but just look at these reverse speckles. They are gorgeous. With the fingering weight yarn cakes, most of them came out of the tingle really easily. And then there's one that has both ends in it. This still shouldn't be so, so bad because it's a mini skein, but I'm going to go untangle it off camera. Here are the unraveled 10 gram cake, 20 gram cake, 50 gram cake, and 100 gram cake. The results are a bit different because we put everything in one pot and the smaller cakes absorbed a disproportionate amount of the dye. If I had set this up with each cake in its own pot, would say one gram for the 100 gram cake, half a gram for the 50 gram cake, etc., then we might see more like similar proportional gradients. But I do think that these results are interesting, and even in our smallest cakes, we still do get a gradient. The 50 gram cake was wound tighter than the 100 gram one, and I think that's why we see a bit more of this paler, uh, paler hint of a peach color, whereas in the 100 gram one, we see a lot more, there's a lot of that pale color, but we have more of the whiter, um, deep, burnt orange splotches just because it was looser and there's a little more of the yarn on the outside because the cake overall was larger. Uh, the other thing that's really interesting is on the tighter cake we do see more of this reverse speckling. The difference is subtle but in this 50 gram cake you really can see more of those reverse speckles. Despite those small tangles, doing this project on mini skeins worked really, really well. Um, and I think that it's just a fun other way you can get, bring a little bit of interest into Save Your Dying Mini Skein Sets for a fade. You could create mini gradients and have that add to your transition of color. It's just another fun thing you can do. With the fingering weight yarn, we did two different types of 100 gram cakes. We did 100 grams made up entirely of 10 gram mini skeins plus a 100 gram cake that's just a 100 gram skein. The main difference, and it's really subtle, 
but I think our mini skein cake was wound a bit tighter. And so you can see that there's a, the gradient is a bit steeper. The color we end up with the end over here is a little more pastel than the color we end up with in the middle um, of our looser wound cake. The individual fingering weight mini skeins feel very similar to the individual DK weight ones, except that they have more of those reverse speckles and the inner color um, ends up being a bit deeper overall because I think that they ended up being a little bit looser almost. But I just love all of those reverse speckles. Now we still need to go and wash all of this yarn. I'm going to do my best to keep these different sets from the cakes separate so that way we can look at them um, all twisted up once things have been washed and dried. But I just love the subtle differences that we got from each of the different ways we created the cakes today. I have added some removable nylon zip ties onto the yarn to help with the washing step. Um, that way just things will get tangled and I can keep things organized for the most part. Um, if you'd like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I'm using in this series, I always include links, um, affiliate links to Amazon and to other suppliers in the video description. Let's see, that is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of some clear dish soap, so just like a tiny bit in my hand. There's a point where, yeah, we might see a hint of color come out and, well, honestly, you can barely, barely see it. Sometimes people ask me how long I wash things off camera versus on. Usually, if things bleed, I might do another two to three rinses. Otherwise, I usually just do one more rinse. It's really just quick to make sure that there isn't leftover dye left in here. And so even just on rinsing out that soap, we are clear. Uh, so then we can go hang this up to dry. I love cake dyeing so much and it was so much fun to play around and try this in one pot in so many different ways. With our DK weight yarn, but we've got our 10 gram cakes, 20 gram cake, 50 gram cake, and 100 gram cake that was all connected. The fingering weight yarn had a lot more pigment overall but I think that these look so stunning and it's really fun to look at a 100 gram cake sort of divided into these minis. Even though it started off as the minis, it's just really fun to see that gradient. I don't know. I, I'm just really excited. There's the 100 grams of the minis wound together, 100 grams of yarn, and four of the 10 gram cakes. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, there's a lot of variables that went into this, but there are so many different things you can do with cake dyeing and so many different ways you can play with even just one color um, and vary it. And yeah, what would you like to do with some cake dyeing? I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, give the video a like, and yeah, I hope that you guys are having a really, really happy Hanukkah, and stay tuned because there will be another episode of the 2019 Chemnitz Hanukkah special tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye, everyone!